My biggest piece of advice would be to do what gets you excited. If that's studying the dynamics of a soccer ball, or if that's studying, um, you know, the way water flows in rivers, or that could be the studying, you know, how cars are built. Whatever it is, it could be really anything that that is interesting to you. Follow that path. It doesn't mean you have to be the best in the world at it. It just means that you have to do your best um, and get excited about it and do what makes you excited because then it becomes a lot more fun and it's it's more worth it. There are a lot of things that are hard about engineering, about really any career you might choose, and I think the important, most important thing is to have a support network, and that could be mentors at your school or your company, it could be your boss, it could be people who work with you or work for you. It really doesn't have a particular shape or form. Um, and for example, for me, whenever I was kind of beating my head against a wall, I couldn't figure out, you know, I was stuck on a problem. I said, there's no way anybody knows anything how to fix it. If I actually just talked it out with somebody, sometimes they'd give me great advice and I'd be able to follow that advice. Sometimes I'd figure it out while talking to them. Um, just really kind of talking it out for me was really helpful to come overcome obstacles. And I think it's also really important to know that everything uh, has a solution. You may not know what it is yet, and it may be hard to find, um, and it may not be coming to you in the next five minutes or even five years, but kind of working towards a solution is still progress, and it's still important, and it still matters for the world. If I can't communicate my ideas, they're not worth all that much. Um, you know, sitting in a lab by itself, an idea isn't really doing anything to help anybody. So being able to communicate your ideas is very, very important. I built a lot of confidence just by practicing talking to people and putting myself out there. If I go to a networking event, there's a lot of schmoozing and I don't really like schmoozing. And so what I will do is I'll tell myself, Shreya, you have to talk to three people before you leave this room. And then you can leave this room and you can go home and, and do what you wanna do. And I uh, have learned to love talking to people and learned to love getting to know new people and kind of learned a few tricks. Sometimes I'll store conversation topics so I know what to say when I'm in a schmoozing situation. Um, so I think that's something you can definitely build and work on and believe in yourself to get there. You're never going to change the world by yourself. You really need, need other people's skills, you need other people to bounce ideas off of, um, you need people to compliment what you're good at. You know, you, the person you're working with doesn't have to be good at all the same things that you're good at and you can still work together and interact and you can even be friends. Um, and so, you know, choosing your teammates import is important, but also choosing your friends is really important uh, because they say that you are the average of the people around you. So I like to think of myself as an average of my family and my friends and my colleagues. And that's kind of the mixture that I am. And I'm, you know, the culture and the values kind of came from my family. The social and the interaction, the communication comes from my friends. And the science and the math and the engineering kind of comes from my colleagues. And I like to be kind of the intersection of those things. So there are a lot of different types of leaders. You don't have to be the person in the front of the room to be the leader at all times. I like to be the person leading logistics and kind of doing the behind the scenes work a lot more. So that is still a type of leadership and it's still really important. And it's important to also recognize that people you are leading are looking up to you. And so to set a really good example, to be honest and straightforward and respectful is really important at any stage of leadership. Growing up, I played the violin and I played the piano. And I don't really play anymore, but those things gave really important skills to me. And they taught me to stick to it. They taught me to not give up when I was bad at something and to work through that. And they taught me the discipline of having to practice every day. I mean, it wasn't fun necessarily, but it was really important and I can see what that gave me. And it doesn't have to be music. It could be sports, it could be a job, it could be uh, taking care of your family at home, whatever it is. Uh, sticking to something is really important. It's a really important life skill. So when I was in middle school and high school, uh, it wasn't cool to be smart, uh, especially if you were a girl. And so a lot of girls, actually put on a more ditzy voice, tried to sound a little more bimbo-like so that the boys would like them. 
And that's something that my parents didn't really stand for. And if I started to sound like that at home, they would tell me to talk properly. One of the best things about going to college was that it, everyone was excited to be smart. And it was all of a sudden like a switch had flipped and it was cool to be smart. And that kind of gave me a lot of freedom to explore in ways that I hadn't uh, kind of felt comfortable uh, exploring before. If I could do it over, I would be proud of being smart from when I was in sixth grade onwards. And I think that um, no one should ever apologize for being smart or curious or excited about science, math, or any other subject.